الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم وعلى آله وصحابه ومن استنى بسنة رؤم الدين All praise due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be on his last Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and on all those who follow the path of righteousness until the last day. The topic about which I am not an expert, uh, though I did do uh, some research for my PhD on this subject and uh, my PhD thesis the exorcist tradition in Islam does uh, is a product of research, academic research. So uh, there is information which I hope to share with you, which is useful. But I would not want to present myself as an expert. So then you can bring all your cases of uh, possession for exorcism over to me. Huh? Now the topic spirit possession or exorcism and reincarnation actually the two are something at different ends of the spectrum uh, it focuses it begins from one's perception of the world of the jinn because from the Islamic perspective all that takes place in the supernatural world, whether it is possession or magic or the evil eye or extrasensory perception or levitation or all of the variety of things that people seem to be able to do or to, uh, under, or to communicate by etc. Uh, or even fortune telling uh, where it is accurate, all of this is traced back to the world of the jinn. The jinn being another set of, hum uh, of uh, creatures who have a, an ability to choose between good and evil like human beings, they were created before human beings, they occupied the earth before human beings. This is why when Allah said to the angels that He was creating a man, a Khalifa, the angels questioned why He would create one who would spill blood and create confusion on the earth. Their question was based on what came before the jinn, that they with their free will on earth had spilt blood, had created uh, confusion. So this is why they asked the question. And this is why the first man was called the Khalifa. Not as some people mistakenly think, that human beings are going to be Khalifa to law fil ard or the Khalifa of Allah, the governor or the vicegerent of Allah on the earth. This is a mistaken understanding. This is Khalifa, this is Khalifa to jinn. Khalifa being the one who comes after. So we as human beings, beginning with Adam, we are the Khalifa of the jinn, we came after khalf in Arabic means behind. We came behind the jinn. This is where the origin of this term khalifa and its context is, is correctly used with regards to human beings on the earth. When the term was used in relationship to the leader of Muslims, that term meant khalifa to Rasulillah. Khalifa to Rasulillah, not khalifa to Allah. This idea which has been propagated quite strongly, you know, in the Jamaati Islami and the uh, Ikhwan, that human beings' role is to be the Khalifa to Allah fil ard, this is an incorrect concept. It's incorrect. No one can be the Khalifa of Allah. So, 
human beings came after the jinn, the jinn came before them. Allah created them from smokeless fire and there are among them those who believe and those who disbelieve. They have been forbidden from, from entering into our world. As a norm, they're invisible to us. However, there are some types of jinn that do remain visible. And the Prophet ﷺ described the various types of jinn. Among them are some that appear in dog, dog form. The dog which is completely black, the Prophet ﷺ said, is from among the jinn. And there are certain types of snakes that are also from among the jinn. Other jinn are able, as I said, to take forms. So they may appear in forms to us as human beings. And this is where we find an explanation for certain phenomena that appear among uh, people involved in uh, deviant beliefs or practices like uh, Sheikh Nazim Al Qubrusi, who is I know popular here in Sri Lanka. He is an individual who claims for himself and his followers claim that he is able to be in more than one location at the same time. Meaning he can be here with you in Sri Lanka and at the same time he will be uh, making tawaf around the Kaaba. And he can be at the same time in, uh, in Cyprus where, where his headquarters is. And at the same time he's visiting somebody else in Malaysia. Right? And there have been incidences where people have reported him being in more than one location at the same time. People said he's here. We said, no, no, he's here. Others said, no, he's there. Well, we know that the jinn can take that form, can take his form and give his followers the impression that he has this kind of power. This is among the ways that the jinn may delude people into believing that some human beings among us have supernatural powers and then that opens the door for people to submit themselves to them, turn over their wills completely to them. As uh, Sheikh Nazim has promised his followers that when the time for death comes, that the angel of death will not take their souls. It will be he there to take their soul and hand their soul over to the angels of the next life. You know, this is a big claim. It is a big lie. Furthermore, he claims that if you are his follower, when the angels Munkar and Nakir come and ask you in your grave, who is your Lord, who was your prophet and what was your religion, that he will be there in the grave to whisper the answer to you. You see, these are big, big claims. But what will cause people to accept these kind of claims? When they see phenomena coming from himself, which gives them the impression that he has powers greater than others. Huh? Same thing with Sai Baba. You know, you can find similar kind of things happening, magical type of things happening around him, which lead people to believe in him. Now, the jinn can affect our world in this way, by taking forms, giving the impression that a person has certain kinds of powers. At the same time, they can also possess objects as well as human beings. They can possess both objects and human beings. In the case of objects, we know well from the story of Prophet Musa and Prophet Harun. When Prophet Musa went up to receive the Torah at Mount Sinai and he left Harun, Prophet Harun behind to watch over the people. Then an individual by the name of As-Samiri, he told the people to melt down their gold jewelry and he put it in a 
mix and he took what he claimed to be dust from the footprints of an angel and he threw it into the mix and after that he made a calf and the people all gathered around the calf and he informed them that this is the God which Moses has gone up on top of the mountain to talk to. Here he is right here. Of course, the people looking at this calf, of course, would have some doubt. He was telling them, no, this is the God, you know, you should bow down to this God. They didn't bow until the cow said, moo. It's mentioned in the Quran. When the cow said, moo, then they fell down and bowed, believing that this in fact was God. Now we know that that golden calf didn't do any mooing. Obviously, it had been possessed by the jinn and was given, that sound came out, giving them the impression that it was actually mooing. Similarly, we had a few years back, I don't know if it happened here in Sri Lanka also, but a phenomenon that occurred all over the world where Hindus are concentrated, where on a particular day, their elephant head god, Ganesh, right, who normally in their puja and their work, worship, they will pour milk over it, they found that milk was going inside of its mouth. And they started to feed the milk directly to the mouth of their god, Ganesh, and it was going in the mouth. This occurred, I know in, in Dubai we have a temple there and the Hindus gathered there in throngs, thousands to watch, see this miracle. And it happened in India, it happened to the Hindu temple in London, I don't know about Sri Lanka, did it happen here also? Yeah, it happened here also, okay. So, now, the scientists in India of course, were skeptical, tried to explain it away by capillary action, where these idols were made of stone, and stone has a certain amount of uh, like air holes or things inside of it, that when water goes on the outside, maybe it may be sucked in by this action they call capillary action. However, these idols were not stone everywhere. Some place the idols were brass. It didn't explain this. For the Hindu, that was confirmation of the truth of his or her belief that Ganesh really was God. And again, for those who didn't understand the world of the jinn, then it would appear to them to be a miracle and maybe cause some people who are not even Hindus to become Hindus and believe in this thing. Whereas, if you understand the world of the jinn, it's not very difficult to conceive of the jinn possessing these statues and sucking in the milk. Similarly, you find in the Christian world a number of occasions